Well, good evening and welcome to the Most Shape Women's History Month Spotlight live stream. My name is Guy Danoff and uh, we are so excited tonight as we've got a great lineup for you. And I couldn't think of anything more appropriate, especially as we're going to celebrate Women's History Month. And uh, the only best way I can think about doing that is bringing on our host for this evening is going to be Moshe President Anna Forsalito, who's also a seventh grade teacher at Rockwood South Middle School. And in just a few weeks, she'll be launching at her school that amazing program called Health Moves Mind. So, Anna, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Guy. How are you doing tonight? You know what? I'm I'm so excited. I know all three of these ladies very well. And, you know, it wouldn't be Missouri unless we had a couple of Zag bombs. So I'll leave that all up to you at this point. I'm just going to get off the get off the broadcast and take it away. Thanks, Guy. All right. Hi, everyone. How are you all doing tonight? I am so happy to have all of you here. And we're just going to shake it up a little bit tonight. We're going to do things a little bit differently. In honor of opening day tomorrow, I'm in St. Louis and I'm a huge Cardinals fan. And although some of you might not be a Cardinals fan, some of our guests might be a Royals fan and that's all right too. But we're going to go with an honor of opening day for the Cardinals tonight. So we're going to kick this off in a, in a baseball traditional way. So with the lineup, here we go. Starting off, leading off for us is our first person up. Bringing up is going to be our center fielder, the person that steals the, sees all of it, our center of attention, Laura Beckman, a consultant from Missouri Healthy Schools. She is on the Moshe, our Moshe Board of Directors. She's also Kathleen Kinderfather, a recipient for 2021, which is an amazing honor. She is also a health and physical education teacher for 28 years and currently is with Caring Back Guidance. So, Laura, welcome to the show tonight. We're so happy to have you. Hi, Anna. Glad to be here. Very excited Hi. about being a part of this team. Yeah, I am so excited. Well, next up in the batting order, we have second up to bat. We have our catcher, Miss Julie Lukanoff. And she, Miss Julie, is truly special. She is Shape America Central, past Central District President 2018. She's also a male Aford President from 2009. And what do you know? She's also a Kathleen Kinderfather Award from 2012. We have greatness too in the room this evening. And she's also been a health and physical education teacher for 31 years. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Julie, welcome to our program tonight. Thank you, Anna. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. <laughs> we can go with this all night, but I can talk baseball for the rest of the night. <laughs> but we got to get to the show, show. So coming up third on our batting list tonight, we have the one and only Miss Terry Gardner coming in as the pitcher. So Terry Gardner is Shape America's Central District Past President and for 2021. She's also Moe First President from 2015. And has taught physical education and adapted for a total of 37 years, currently at Outdoor Tomorrow's Foundation. So, Terry, welcome to the show tonight. I'm so excited to, for all of you to be here. Welcome. Whoop, whoop. Thank you, Anna. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. And also the Kathleen Kinderfather Award winner. Oh, yeah, I'm too. so happy. Me too. Woohoo! I am with greatness all over the place tonight. Is this like a foreshadowing something that I need to now like this can become a life goal so that all four of us can can receive this award at some point in time? I'm feeling the vibe here. <laughs> and we just celebrated the life and the life and success of Kathleen Kinderfather and our on our last uh, podcast for the Zag Talk podcast with Guy Danoff had done a great job of celebrating her life and all of her achievements. It was a beautiful podcast. So if you have not seen it, please make sure to check it out. So ladies, let's dive right in. It's just the girls right now. I'm so excited about this. We're doing a little bit different. So question one, Julie, we're going to, I'm sorry, Laura, we're going to start out with you. Why did you choose health and physical education for to get into? Why did you choose? And why do you continue to serve as a leader? Well, um, I chose because I had a lot of positive experiences and had received recognition for, for um, skill sets and things with physical education early on, my physical education teachers early on, uh, high school coaches. Uh, and then my family had a huge, uh, you know, piece of that 
be influenced because we did a lot of family activities with out of school time activities. Mm -hmm. And so throughout all of those experiences, I was able to build a repertoire of, of activities that I felt confident in performing. And most importantly, I was happy. I felt physically good. My mood Mentally, um, socially, I was able to be involved in activities such as volleyball well into my lifetime, um, water skiing. Uh, so I that is why I got into it is because of the quality of life that I was feeling and how I wanted to share and be able to provide and support others, mm -hmm. especially our youth, in gaining that kind of feeling for life, healthy lifestyle development. I love it. And just to let you all know, she was a professional water skier at a point in time in her life, mm, cool. which is a fun fact about Julie. So I love that, Julie. And I think that's so much about what we love about our profession. And I'm going to I'm going to pause before I introduce our next person real quick, because I forgot to. I'm so excited about the lineup right now that I forgot to say that we are live and we do have interactions with those guests on live, on streaming right now. So if you are on, if you're streaming live, if you joined us tonight, please feel free to join us in the chat to put your comments in the chat and we'll pop them up as the questions go along. And we may have some comments to come in just to see how our, who's interacting with us tonight. And we may get some questions from the audience and feel free to ask those and we'll ask them as we move on, on throughout the show. So just want to make sure everyone knows that they're at and we can't wait to interact with all of you online. So Julie, you are next up, my dear. How, why did you choose health and physical education and why did you continue to serve as, as a leader? I had a high school physical education teacher that I loved, Judy Snyder, and she was a huge influence on me, uh, saying that I was gonna go to college. Um, sorry, I'm gonna get emotional because okay. um, when I went to my parents to say, hey, I'm gonna go to college, I wanna be a teacher, my mom and dad were like, why, why do you wanna go to college? Because I, I have two older siblings that never went to college. And um, it, back when I was growing up, it really wasn't pushed. Like today, kids don't have a choice. Um, and so Judy Snyder was a huge influence. And as I moved through my years, um, one of the first PE teachers that taught at Blair Oaks with, we, with me was Sue Matthews. She was a huge one. And then Sandy Mazzacco and Marianne Beer, who are former consultants for DESE, they're huge. Sandy is really the reason why I went and got my master's then, because I was at uh, an institute. And so um, I've had people in my life that have instilled in me. My parents were huge with just um, when you say you're going to do something, do it. And, and let's, let's, let's make sure we do it good. Let's, let's do, let's do a good job. And so, uh, I've had a lot of mentors, uh, Sherry Beeler's another one that, you know, she's right up there. Anytime I had a question, she, she, I had her on call a speed dial, you know, to ask her things. So, um, I love the interaction with the kids uh, with the students and being at the high school level, I had the opportunity, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of those students still, my former students still today. And I get to see some of those that maybe weren't um, the best student, the best at every activity, but I tried to make sure that in my classes, um, we did activities that some, everybody could be, oh, everybody could excel at. And, um, they weren't, they were, they were life, they were, they were lifetime fitness activities, things that you could do for the rest of your life. Um, and so it kind of took some of those, uh, kids that maybe shined a little bit brighter. Uh, there was always an activity, we would always do an activity where one of those others who was pretty quiet would go. And um, I just, I, you know, um, Jim Hiroff was another one who was a huge, a huge supporter of me and I was of him. And he always said, you serve your state, you serve your district, and then you serve your national. And um, when I was going through, I thought, you know, I, I told Matt Simmons, we, I, 
uh, was elected on the board for Central District and I was around that a little bit and then the opportunity came for me to be able to be Central District uh, president and both that and Moshe floors me still to the day. But, um, you know, I, 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 I just want everybody, I, I just love health and physical education. I want quality health and physical education. So. I, I love it. And, and if any of you tear up tonight, please feel free. I Sorry know that I that. probably will at some point in time. You know, I, I may usually be the first and that's okay. It happens. <laughs> it's, this is stuff that we are near and dear to all of us. And we are a very passionate profession and with very passionate leaders on this call. And so, you know, I, I love the vulnerability that you all of you are willing to share. And, and I just thank you for it. So thank you. Um, Terry, we'll bring it up with you. Why did you choose the clean up batter? The clean up right. batter. Got our number three. Clean up batter. Come on, Why Thelma. Okay. <laughs> well, for me, I grew up in a gym and my parents had a huge influence on me as far as work ethic. And a, my mom was a teacher of sorts. She taught twirling, which was really fun. She taught all kinds of kids twirling. But my dad was a physical educator and a coach. And so I grew up in a gym and on the track. And I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher. But a funny note that most of you don't know I was a drama major on scholarship and a physical education minor. So it didn't take me long to figure out where my passion <laughs> lied. And that was in healthy behaviors and healthy lifestyle choices. And I always, I always told my students that I truly believe in the benefits of healthy lifestyle behaviors. And I have experienced that. And that's, it's just such a thrill to get kids excited about it and, and to be able to see that transition and their thinking and their beliefs when you're talking about healthy lifestyle behaviors. And like Julie and like what Laura said, there are so many people that surround you and, and are mentors and encourage you to move on to that next level. So when we talk about why we're still in this after forever, why are we still doing what we do? It's because of all those people that have influenced and mentored us. And because even if you're old, you're still passionate about health and physical education. And, and, and now we're still involved trying to give back to the profession and, an important thing that, that I really enjoyed the last several years is being that mentor to other people. Mm -hmm. It's just a fun role to take on to encourage young professionals in the field. So that's why we're still here. You're still stuck with us. Oh, I'm happy to be stuck with all of you. We, you know, and I am where I am because of all of you. And all of you have served as mentors to me and over the years and it's been an incredible journey and I've, I've truly enjoyed and been just, it's been such an honor to have worked and to be guided through the years by, by all of you. Um, you know, I would not be here with, without any of you and learning from all of you. So thank you for what you do. And I hope that I will be able to pay that forward and be a mentor to other people. Um, as, as the years progress. So I, I love it. It's the magic of our Moshape family. <laughs> so uh, okay. we're going to move into our next question. And if once again, if you are just joining us, please feel free to interact with us on the chat. If there's any questions or comments, we can pull those up on the screen that we, we can use and we can ask those out loud. I'm, I'm not sure if there's any to put on right now, but we will move right into the next question. But feel free to interact with us. We'd love to hear from you and love to hear shout outs. Um, and so, Julie, we're going to start with you, Miss Catcher. So for us, tell us of all of your achievements and contributions. And let me tell you, there is so many of them of mm -hmm. un, all of your achievements and contributions within our profession and to our profession. What what are you most proud of and why? Um, uh, oh, gosh, probably just. Uh, the excitement of my students when I came back from 
a conference or a convention because they knew I was going for them. They knew mm -hmm. my ultimate goal was to bring something back that I could use in my classroom or my gymnasium. And so when you have students who get excited about being in physical education mm -hmm. and it's all about your how how you present it because I, I did a, I would do a folk social and square dance unit with seniors and there would be seniors who would be square dancing and having a blast and laughing mm -hmm. about it. And so to see kids excited about getting, uh, being active and, you know, having activities that they can use for the rest of their, um, for the, for the rest of their life. That's what I wanted to keep pushing. Uh, and also just every year that I go to Mo Shape and we see many, many future professionals attending. And I just think of all of the things that they have already in their portfolio, what they have already ready to take, put them into the classroom. I, I just think that's awesome because back when we were going to school, man, we didn't have the opportunity. We didn't, I didn't know about Mo Aford until I was in my second or third year of teaching. Uh, and so uh, I just, uh, I, I think the, um, just having kids excited, I think, is a big thing. Uh, still be having students wanting to get into the profession. I think that's a huge one. Uh, and then just the networking and the friendships that I have and the people that I have met all across the United States. I love them. And two of my three kids are in education. Yay! <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, I love this so much. And it just... it. It's wonderful. And I and I have so much to say, but I want to move on to our next person because I know that we we need to yes. keep rolling with time. So um, but Terry, I have to ask you next. Um, what of all your achievements and contributions, again, it's never ending. You know, what are you most proud of and why? That's a really tough question. Um I think, like Julie, I think the most, if I look at the overarching, the most important thing is the relationships with the students, with the colleagues, and all the people that you meet along the way. It's, it's just, it's just amazing. So I would say those relationships and those continue we talk with each other and we laugh about um, how we're still now friends on Facebook with some of our former students. Mm -hmm. And some of us have had our students, students in class, or yep. you walk to the, through, the, through the school and you realize that one of your former students has been hired to teach alongside you and they put old jokes on your on your door for the rest of the year. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just, the relationships are amazing. Um, probably something that opened my eyes to the bigger picture was completing the national board certification process. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was able to serve on the national board standards committee with, um, there was a total of 13 of us from across the United States and just, but once again, meeting those people and interacting and really diving into what does it mean to be a physical education teacher? What's it look like, sound like, feel like? What are the attributes? I mean, that was that was a really challenging activity for me. Um, but the main thing is the relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. I love it so much. And fun and the both of you, the relationships are so strong with between students and you are I understand that you were both in former students' weddings. So yes. <laughs> which I love. Bride, I love bridesmaid at 47. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Me too. Me too. Everybody I called me coach. So they never powerful. called me anything but coach. <laughs> yeah. I just love that so much. And it's so powerful and it's because it speaks to how much you care and your the everlasting relationships you have with them, and that's why we do what we do. So, and yeah. Laura, I'm gonna I'm gonna move to you. And 
Oh my gosh. Of all your accomplishments and contributions, what are you most proud of and why? Well, I would, I would say, first of all, of course, building those relationships, but building support and being able to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And also to understand what your strengths and weaknesses are and to surround yourself with people that can help you grow. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we all have that. And I feel even at my age, with all my experience as a coordinator for two large districts and a teacher, uh, at elementary, middle, high school, and college, I still see growth in myself, surrounding myself with other people, and then creating a vision that you can take research-based practice and actually impact uh, quality health and physical education staff, you know, people that are in the profession, the students, the parents, the school community. And so really bringing it all together um, I feel like the contributions of, and achievements is to be able to utilize those resources, leverage others for their knowledge and expertise, but also leverage funding. Um, I had a lot of support and was able to receive millions of dollars for local and state efforts to provide for Missouri teachers and Missouri health and physical education programs um, how we can impact our profession and impact lifestyle behaviors overall. Uh, the most profound probably thing based, uh, thing that's ever happened to me, uh, and I'm just blessed to have been able to surround myself with people that have, uh, have been able to make achievements become real because you can't do it by yourself. Right. You have to have a team. And um, was probably being invited based on the research and impact and the data that we were able to prove that the things that we put in place made a difference was to be invited as one of 54 delegates from 29 countries to the 2010 Global Forum for Physical Education Pedagogy. And we sat there with 29 countries understanding what health and physical education is around the entire nation. Um, it was the most, or and, 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 and internationally, it was the most incredible thing to look at Finland and their health and PE programs and China, and to be able to come up together with, with the same type of pedagogy that we felt should be, you know, international mm -hmm. and what we represent. Wow. But, awesome. And my understanding is that you were, also the only school representative of those 29 countries, which is just phenomenal. I, it's such an honor. You know, I love that so much. And if you see my girl, Jersey, Michelle Huff here yeah. says, thank you ladies for all you do for our students in our health HPE profession. That's my girl. <laughs> Michelle, she is amazing. Educator. <laughs> love you ladies. Yep. Um, and you all will hopefully get to meet her at Shape NOLA or at we, our most convention in the we fall. Met, we got to meet her at Shape, New Jersey. Yeah. That's right. Her. You did. That was so mm -hmm. exciting. I'm so excited about that. And, you know, Laura, I have to say one more thing. Oh, there's Christy Beery for you. <laughs> there's your other right-hand woman, Terry. I love you, ladies. And I love the respect and continue to learn from you. She is wonderful. Um, you know, Laura, I have to say one more thing that it just really blew me away. And I actually you talked about it today in my PE class as my kids did, did the PACER test today. <laughs> so one of the things that you and Tom Lowry did, our executive director, is that you created this web system to track data that linked the fitness testing specifically to see the links between a specifically core strength and oxygen and oxygen consumption or aerobic capacity. And you were able to provide data that linked that with math and science scores, but also higher attendance. And it just blew my mind. And I was really hoping that you just share a little bit more about that. Yeah, with uh, Ferguson Florissant, we received the Carol White grant, which was over half a million dollars for three years. And so we really embraced technology and we had a research analyst, um, Dr. Farhad Jadali, and I asked him to help me to create a web-based fitness program for our staff to really begin to look at research 
the research that show that healthier children are better academically. Mm -hmm. um, and so we certainly did take a, a tracking system and all of the teachers in the district, we had 23 schools, um, entered data and uh, the fitness data pre and post. And then we were able to extrapolate attendance data with their um, fitness scores and as well as their math and communication arts. We saw a huge correlation between aerobic capacity and core strength, not so much flexibility, um, BMIs or uh, uh, upper body, but those two main areas really was an aha moment. And then we began to really build some creative thinking of resources on how to improve that even more. But with that, uh, with that data, that is really what really started getting some, some more attention about how important it is to be healthy because we know the fitness test is not about being the most fittest individual. It's about meeting healthy fitness zones. It's about mm -hmm. being a healthy person. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to show that when a child drops a fitness standard, their attendance levels and communication arts and math uh, standards had dropped as well. And that was a huge uh, amount of data to be able to share with the Board of Education. It's so powerful, especially when you have all that data to back up to show, just physically show these numbers in order to as advocacy for what we do. And I can't say anything more about it unless I bring on your partner in crime and for many, 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 many years. So Tom and, and our wonderful executive director, our fearless leader, Tom, hey, Tom. welcome to the hey, show. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Tom, welcome. We're so happy to have you here tonight. And I was hoping that, you know, you worked with Laura for so many years. You two, you know, traveled the country together with like 20 something at least presentations. And, but I know that what she's speaking to, you, you worked with her side by side on this. And I was hoping that you'd love to share some of your favorite stories about all, you know, one of your, one of your favorite stories, keeping our time frame to, you know, with one of each of these wonderful, powerful women that we have on here tonight. Yeah, it's very, very difficult to, to keep the comments short <laughs> when you're surrounded by quality. And the one <laughs> the beginning thing that I would say is that the three people that you're featuring here tonight, Anna, are what I would call transformational part pioneers. Uh, they were more than a teacher. I mean, a person can teach for 20 years and have an impact, but they look far beyond their their teaching duties, their instructional responsibilities, and the connections they had, they were able to see visions mm -hmm. that others had not seen before. They also partnered with people who shared the same passions. And it's that group of people working together. Uh, they did not set out on their career and say, one day I'm going to be a state president. That's true. That was one of the last <laughs> things that was in their mind. That's true. And others saw the quality of their work. They saw the influence. They saw the ideas that were transforming what started out as sport, 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 to become, as Julie mentioned, quality health and physical education, like she pioneered for so many years. And then we made sure that it's health and physical education, and now health, physical education, and school wellness. And so all of these people right here, they were outstanding professionals, but they achieved in ways that most people had not even considered were possible. They surrounded themselves with like-minded people who could move the agendas forward. For all the years that Laura and I worked together, she was a product lady. Let's get this done. We're gonna do this, boom, 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 boom. Yes, Laura. I said, Laura, <laughs> we, have to talk about, we have to talk about the process too. And so together we were able to weave together 
the processes necessary to achieve the product. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I, I still fondly recall the United States Department of Education conference in Washington, D.C. for all the people that were funded by the Department of Education. And it was simply because of that presentation and the data that was presented that the PEP grant was funded fully for the last year of the grant, the only one in the country. And then taking the same thing forward with the CDC. Mm -hmm. it, passion with purpose and professional knowledge is what got all three of these ladies here. And I consider all of them dear friends as well as colleagues. The respect that I have for these three is among, among the best. And I still have wonderful memories of a shrimp boil at the Lukenhof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People yes. were coming together, and I know that I've said too much, oh. but it was much more than just being a great educator. They impacted, because of the work that they did, their administrators brought them to the higher level because of what they were able to achieve. So, ladies, I love you all. And let's keep it going for about another 40 or 50 years. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Love you, Tom. Love you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, so much. And you're happy to stay on the show with us. You're happy to hang out backstage. Whatever you choose, we'd love to have you. So <laughs> I'm gonna we're gonna move forward to our third and final question. And you know, I I just I have to say that what Tom said really resonates with me and, and to all of you and speaking again to the relationship and power of MoShape, you know, what we do is all about the relationships and, you know, there's, there's so much connectedness and there's so many things that we've, that all of you have done. But once again, I just thank all of you for being here and, and for giving your, your hearts and just passion and, and help and inspiring me and so many others as, mm -hmm. as we continue to do so. So I'm very excited about it. And I mean, I really can't say one more thing because I really have one more Zagbound bring on. And I mean, Guy would like to have a little bit of fun with you all tonight before we have our very last and final question. So Guy, I know you had something funny to share and you wanted a minute to share your funny tidbit or your Zagbound. So please go right ahead. All right. So this is just too good. I have to start with Laura. <laughs> On the days that she retired, we played a really, really big joke on her. We were getting ready to release our next On The Move. It was actually on mental health. We had our expert. And uh, Anna, you were actually there, and you were oh, in on it. Oh, fantastic. And so we had <laughs> one, of, one of our experts uh, you know, going to do this segment on mental health, especially as it applies to teachers and educators. So we asked her if we could, uh, after we shot the reel On The Move, we asked her if she'd get into a hammock. And if she would just kind of do like a Saturday Night Live skit where she was half serious, but half not. And anyways, we sent it to Laura as the final product. And Laura, you can pick up the story from there. OK, so I was in the Virgin Islands at St. John's and I get a text from Guy Danhoff and it says, hey, here's our next on the move segment. I know you're retired, but I thought I'd share this with you. And it has our expert in the hammock and. It's so inappropriate. I'm like, what the heck is happening? Like there's curse words coming out. And I'm like, this, what do you, have they gone nuts? I've retired and they have all completely lost their minds. They have lost their minds. And I'm like calling guy going, are you, have you lost it? What is happening there? I mean, I leave and you all have gone off the deep end. Something's wrong. <laughs> oh, we had anyway, so much fun. It was, a, it, it, was, it was so funny. It was a funny <laughs> skit, and I enjoyed it very much after that. But I was panicking. I'm well, Laura, lie. we actually we, we sent it to Tom first. We had to get his clearance. So he... <laughs> oh, sure. Blame me. <laughs> All right. I got a kindness story, okay? Julie, you know this. A few years ago, for at Mo Shape, the infamous Thursday night, the president's social, 
Julie makes this guacamole, and I mean, like, I don't care where you've been, Julie, like, could sell it. <laughs> I told her I'd mark party. it for her. That was yes. Terry's party. Terry's party. party. <laughs> there we go, right? It's Thelma and Louise, here we go. Anyways, <laughs> so fast forward a few years later, uh, Tom, Anna, and myself, we were at Central District uh, at the Leadership Summit, and while we were there, we had to stay a little bit later because we were working on something. And we thought we were going to miss out on Julie's guacamole. And what does Julie do? Oh, Julie, pick up the story from there. Well, I was. I told my husband, "Oh my gosh, where is the where are the Missouri people? This is the main reason I'm doing this meal." And so I told Tim, my husband, I said, "Okay, I'm going to take a bowl of guacamole and put it to the side so they at least have some before it's all gone." So, I yeah. That's awesome. So you all can have some. <laughs> all right. My last story. It's super fun. Terry, you'll remember it. it was your presidency and your theme was about growing. And you remember when we had that backdrop with all those props and we had green hair and all kinds of crazy stuff and we we're taking photos. And this is when we first started with social media, too. So it wasn't like we were even experts at it. We were just having fun. So, Terry, pick it up from there. <laughs> Well, it involved Guy and I in a photo together, and he is much taller than me, so he had like a tree coming out of his head, and I, I, that came up as a memory not that long ago, but it was very cute. <laughs> and we, we did a great picture together. I don't know what's so funny about that guy. <laughs> you know, we have some, I mean, apparently Julie's guacamole is famous because Christy says it's the mom. It's the, it's just amazing. It is the mom. <laughs> so, so are her shrimp boils. I'm not going to lie. Her shrimp oh, yeah. boils are amazing. <laughs> oh, Thank you all all right. very much. I just want to well, I hope I get to that have some in, at, this summer in, in, Denver, in Colorado. So uh, we'll see yep. on that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> all right. So I just wanted to say seriously to all three of you, as Tom said, uh, you are living legends. And I'm being very serious when I say this, that I would not have ever had the kind of success that I am having, let alone being nudged into being one of our leaders without you three. And, and Laura, you know it the most because we work together. We've been working together for close to four years now on the CDC grant with Missouri Healthy Schools. And Anyways, I just want to just just to tell you, like Tom said, uh, I, what amazes me the most, like Tom, is all four of you actually, I mean, have not slowed down whatsoever which, in, in your passion and your and your ability to be effective and have these zag ideas. And and even Mary's jumping in on a comment and oh. uh, she's been a little left <laughs> out because she never had the guac. So sorry about that. But can I request it at convention? <laughs> Julie, can we request it in the uh, motion? Sure. There you go. <laughs> Mary, you'll get to have it at Moshe. <laughs> so with that, ladies, I, again, I'm just so happy that we're able to bring you on. So I'm going to turn it back over to Anna for the final question, because I'll be very honest. When we were doing our fact checking, this was one question that Anna posed that I was just cannot wait to hear. So with that, I'm going to remove myself and turn back over to Anna. Thanks, Thank guys. you, Guy. Well, ladies, last and final question of the evening. I'm very excited to share this one. I'll let it pop up on the screen so y'all can have a second to see it. And looking ahead into our future, where do you feel our profession needs to focus its efforts? And I will start with you, Terry. You need to be a cleanup hitter, right lead off batter tonight. Right from the start. Okay. Right from the start. So there's so many things that pop into my head, so many different ideas when I think about this, but most of them could come under the umbrella as student-centered or student-focused. Because I feel like, unfortunately, a lot of what we do in the classroom is geared towards a small percentage of our population. And one of my mantras has always been with my work with adapted and different groups is inclusion. And I want all the students challenged, engaged, and I want them to be able to have a creative component that affects the outcome of the activity. So I want them that engaged, that they actually can, can affect the outcome of what we're doing. 
So if I, if I give you some other words, it would be experiential. I don't want the same old, same old, you guys. I don't want, I have never taught just team sports. It's not, I went to a conference not that long ago and I had a very challenging conversation with a physical educator who told me they only do team sports. And I'm like, 20% of your population is going to align with what you're doing. What about the other 80%? So, and that's part of why I do what I do now with the Outdoors Tomorrow Foundation. We're talking about real life skills that are not your traditional physical education activities. We're still focused on healthy lifestyle behaviors. We're focused on being healthy but we're teaching students also to be collaborative, cooperative mm -hmm. in what we do in physical education. We have that opportunity more so than anyone else in that building. So I just, I would like to see us continue to, to push that, to really be student focused, student centered, and to be inclusive in everything that we do. It's been so intentional. What you do has been so intentional. I love that. And thank you so much for sharing. And Laura, I'm pitching it to you. You are the next one up. And you know what? Looking ahead, where do you feel our profession needs to focus on its efforts? Well, I feel like there's a consistent, there still needs the value of in our uh, schools that our school leaders need to value health and well being. Uh, as much and provide those opportunities as much as they do academics, because that certainly is the foundational needs. And in the whole child, school, whole community, whole child model, health and physical education are two of the top 10 components that are research based that affect healthy lifestyle development and behavior. So in, if I was to look at, you know, if as a new teacher, I would certainly get involved and not be afraid to move out of your comfort level, know your strengths and, and, and weaknesses and know, and, and, and leverage others that can help you to support in that passion. As peers, you want to walk beside each other and support one another. Um, that helps you lead together as a group holistically to create change for quality health and physical education programming. If I was to think of some of the top five strategies or things to really uh, impact our field would be to advocate and promote for your programs uh, in your local, locally, state, and nationally. Um, have some curriculum and instruction accountability, just like all the other uh, academic areas. We are academic. We are health and academic. Um, embed technology uh, and implement some models to where you can really look at whether or not you are being effective. Uh, and, and, and then just like Terry said, it has to be personalized and meaningful as a program. So what are the students' interests? How do we help them grow individually? And how do we impact them in a diverse and, and build up that uh, repertoire of activities that they can go out and be engaged in activities or in being healthy and, and cope with things and be able to, um, you know, have to, to stay away from risk factors that are going to affect their success, right? How are we going to help them? Um, extend curriculum to your home and your neighborhood and your community. Bring in those parents, you know, build those relationships with all of those that surround the students and the school community to build that support system and, and address that whole child, address the whole child, give them opportunities to engage uh, and integrate problem solving, cognitive functioning, um, and skill development. I mean, those are some top things that I would say uh, to improve. And don't stay status quo. Always look for something, set a goal, and look for something to improve upon because you only get better and you, you cannot believe the amount of impact you have when you just start the snowball. Mm -hmm. Start to build it. 
because there's so many of us that feel the same way. And I love being able to work with everyone on this screen. Um, it, it's been a journey throughout my career in helping me grow. Thank you, Laura. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Julie, yeah. you're going to bring us home tonight with, with your answer. Um, looking ahead, you know, where do you feel our profession needs to focus in its future? I feel that uh, I echo both what Terry and Laura said, um, but I, I, but also uh, kind of being your own advocate, showing that you are a quality health and physical education teacher and sh show it, I mean, walk the talk. I mean, basically mm -hmm. um, get out there, get involved, not only in um, things within your district, committees within your district, programs within your district, but also your state level. Become involved in MoShape or any any of the any of the state uh, associations and also your national association. Become a member of Shape America. Uh, uh, Anna and I were talking last night, you know, social media is huge and and I feel that health and physical education teachers, we share so much that you should have all kinds of cool activities, different activities that you can do that meet the standards that, you know, that you can involve your students in and once again, get them excited about physical education, which then promotes your own program. Um, I just, I, 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 feel you need to be a big advocate. Uh, invite that principal in. They don't have to just come in your classroom whenever they're doing an observation. And heck, sometimes like when I would tell my principal, hey, we're doing this cool activity. I want you to stop by. I want you to look at it, watch it. I mean, it, there were many times he turned it into an evaluation because he was like, this is just too good not to use. And so just, you know, be that big advocate for yourself and make sure that you are top notch, that you are striving to make yourself better every day, every week, every month, every year. Um, so that, I just think you've got to be a big advocate. You know, I don't know if there's going to be a dry house left in the dry house left in the house tonight, just or dry eye left in the house tonight. Just to let you all know because I'm going to tear up just because I feel the energy coming off the screen, in between the screens from all of you, and I just want to say thank you and thank you so much for sharing all of this this evening. And I agree 100% with all of you. Um, and I'll say one thing, but as you said, Julie, and what all of you said is a call out to our future professionals to get involved now as a future professional, get involved in our profession, in MoShape, in Shape America, become members and come to our convention, come to Shape NOLA, get involved and come talk to us, reach out to us, you know, get involved, Do can try to um, present and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make those, to ask those questions, but get involved now because when you get involved as a future professional, you will stay involved in this profession and you will have the opportunity to meet amazing individuals like all of these people on the screen tonight. Because <laughs> if it wasn't for Julia's smile and her hug and her genuinely caring every single year after year, Anna, how are you doing? How's it going? You know, Terry saying, how are you doing? I love, I love you. And Terry reaching out and saying, how are you doing? And even as I started to get involved with, be in in the board and just making sure that if I needed anything in your genuine just involvement every single year we have this magic in our in our profession and in mo shape and getting to work with Laura personally with Missouri all the schools the past couple of years Laura's been such a mentor and I'm so excited to see what's next it's been overwhelming and Tom I know you're still here but I've learned so much from you as well I know we're spotlighting the ladies but I can't talk about how much I'm learning without talking about you and so thank you uh, so much. And just, I just really, truly ad ad appreciate all of you. So with that, I will come to our final thing of, we can't wait to see you in Shape NOLA. And in person is going to be April 26th to April 29th. And I thank all of you ladies again so much from the bottom of my heart. This has been truly an honor and a blessing just to be witness and part of all this this night. So can't wait to see all of you. Thank you for joining us tonight. 
all of you on the screen and all of you have chimed in. We love all of you. We can't wait to see you. And I'm Anna Forsledo, and we will have a great night. See you later. Bye.